Hey, what is one thing that college football fans talk about and argue about every year? Yeah, it's the fact that the BCS was awesome, right? No, they actually discuss how to improve the playoff system, not to bring it back to a weird time. But also to some, it is pretty strange that Division I FBS is the only division in college football with a four-team playoff, and it took us a while to get there, as the Division I FCS has 24 teams, Division II and Division III. Heck, they invite 40-plus teams to their national tournament. But it also might seem strange to you that it was another thing that these so-called lower divisions in college football fit figured out that has made the regular season and made the national title race even more exciting in Division I FBS. This is the story of how the conference championship game came to be and why Division II should be thanked for that. But before I get to that, subscribe to the channel, please, below. Also, make sure you ring the bell so you can get updates on when I'm going to be dropping brand new videos. Also, please share this video with other college football fans. Share this channel with other college football fans. And you can also check out my Patreon in the description below. And also check out my podcast, too, in the description below. So before I get to the decision that changed college football, we have to introduce a conference that you may have never heard about, or at least don't know a lot about. That conference is the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. The PSAC is one of the largest conferences in the country, as it currently has 18 colleges playing. And the reason for the large amount of teams is because 14 out of 18 of the colleges are from the Pennsylvania State system of higher education. Due to this, when the PSAC initially started in 1951, it had 14 teams playing football. Due to having so many teams, not every team would play each other, so the conference was moved into two divisions. Me saying this now doesn't seem so crazy, but in 1951 a conference with that many teams was pretty rare as there were no Division I conferences with that many teams, and only the Middle Athletic Conference had over 20 teams at that point, and that's a conference I'll go over in the future because it was a weird hybrid conference. But anyway, with the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference having two divisions, they would set up the PSAC Conference title game in 1960. Having a conference championship game only made the conference games even bigger, since there was no Division II National Championship tournament, so the championship game would pretty much be that for all of these PSAC teams. Since the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference would have a championship game, it also ran into another issue, which was the restrictions of regular season games. The PSAC and Division II teams were only allowed to play 10 regular season games. So because of the addition of the championship game, this forced all of the teams in this conference to only schedule nine games in the regular season. That means six in the conference and three out of the conference, instead of four. They would have to schedule nine games and leave one game open in case they made the championship game. This accounted for some scheduling craziness for some teams, especially the ones that never made the title game. They were only playing nine games every year instead of ten. Plus, with the introduction of the Division II National Championship Tournament, the PSAC, were looking for a solution to their problem. So to remedy this issue, the then-conference commissioner, Todd Eberle, asked Dick Yoder, the athletic director at Westchester and also a member of the Division II Council, to draft a new rule. The new NCAA legislation would allow the PSAC and any conference to play a title game and leave that game exempt from the regular season limits. This idea of a conference title game being exempt from the regular season was really new and revolutionary that it was really hard to find another conference to get on board with the idea, as they would have to present it at the council and would need another conference to back up this radical idea. Eventually, the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference would find the Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association to get on board with the idea. Since the CIAA had 12 teams and were also playing a conference title game and were looking to have it exempt from the regular season as well. With the two conferences on board, they took their idea to the NCAA, which would state that a conference with at least 12 teams would have the right to schedule a championship game without giving up a regular season game or affecting their football national title tournament invitation hopes. When the PSAC and the CIAA took it to the NCAA, the NCAA voted unanimously to approve the idea, and it wasn't really a big deal. 
I say that because I have scoured the internet and have found maybe a blurb about it. There was no real big story, no big headline, no nothing. It was also not a big deal because there was no Division I FBS conference with that many teams. So no one who was at the meeting and voted for it thought they would ever see it play out. With the new rule now accepted, it would allow the PSAC or any conference to stage a conference championship game starting in 1988 and not have to give up regular season games for it. And even though the PSAC could and was planning on staging one in 1988, they ended up not holding a championship game. This was really strange because the PSAC held a championship game from the 1960 season until 1987. The reason for them not playing a championship game in 1988 was because the Division II National Football Tournament expanded from eight teams to 16, and the PSAC thought that holding a championship game would hurt their conference from potentially getting more than one team in the tournament, since if they had their two top teams playing each other, they thought that maybe the council would only choose one of them. Another reason why they may not have wanted to play a conference championship game was because when the tournament expanded to 16, you had to win four games to win the national title instead of three, so they felt like adding another game on top of an already tough season would be a little difficult. The PSAC would have two teams in the tournament in 1988 and would continue to have multiple teams for the next few years. The PSAC would eventually bring back their title game in 2008, and it continues to happen to this day. Meanwhile, the other conference, the CIAA, they would continue to hold their CIAA championship game, and they did so in 1988 and still continue to do so. The title game would not hurt any of their teams from getting in the new 16-team tournament, as in 1988, the CIAA had three teams play in that national tournament, and will continue to have representation from one or two schools over over the next few years. The new rule would eventually move on to Division I FBS where the first ever SCC championship game would happen in 1992. But not without some controversy though, as there would be some that would think that with this championship game, it would ruin the SEC's chances at a national championship, as there could be a team that would be in the national title picture, but lose the SEC title game, thus ruining their chances and the conference chances at a national title. Fortunately though, the SEC didn't have that happen as in 1992, an undefeated Alabama would fend off Florida to continue their undefeated season and win the national title that year too. After that, the Big 12 would introduce their own conference title game in 1996, where it pitted number three Nebraska against unranked Texas. Texas would end up upsetting Nebraska, thus ruining Nebraska's outside chances at a national title. And this would be the first time we would see a conference championship game ruin a team's hopes at a national title. Along with the SEC and the Big 12, the Big 10, Pac-12, ACC, American Conference, Sunbelt, and Conference USA all hold championship games, even though Conference USA probably won't have a championship game in the future since they have under 10 teams. Finally, the conference title game has become such an important part of the college football season that when the Big 12 went from 12 teams to 10, it still got to hold a title game, as they got the title game rule changed to now where all you need is 10 teams to hold a conference title game at the end of the year. So that just shows how important this conference title game is and how much money it makes for a conference too. So for all the fun we have as fans watching it and for all the money that all the schools and the TV networks make, they should really thank the PSAC and the CIAA for coming up with and being behind this radical idea that we all enjoy the first weekend in December. And thank you so much for hanging out with me for Conference Talk Episode 2. Make sure you like this video below, share this video with other college football fans, and as always, subscribe to the channel below, ring the bell for updates, and check out my Patreon and my podcast in the description below.